Good morning, folks. Today we've got space weather, cold snaps in the atmosphere, solar forcing of various weather features, and a look at solar activity in both armed conflict and climate, the grim warning as well. But we're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, where not much changes in the story. More M-class solar flares, minor plasma pushes out into CMEs. There are several plasma filaments and sunspots to monitor for eruptive activity right now, especially since solar flaring is expected to continue. Speaking of expectations, I told you that while official forecasters pegged CME impact for yesterday, I thought it would be slow, possibly not hitting until today. So far, no signatures in the solar wind telemetry, eyes open for that solar wind enhancement today. Meanwhile, the flaring regions are not hard to spot, or the reasons why their flaring is expected to continue. You see here the flare flashing, largely confined to three areas with one on the south and two on the north. We're watching those areas closely for more flares, especially since the magnetic complexity of the sunspot groups has been growing. Each of the big spots could fire a bigger flare, and positioning suggests there'd be a good chance the eruption would be aimed at Earth. Bit of weather up next. For those in warm Christmas conditions like me, you might not know that Michigan to New Jersey have been seeing record cold marks broken the last several days. It's always warm somewhere and cold somewhere else. The first up in the science articles today is this excellent paper on how Brazilian rainfall is a combination of forcing by the sun and ENSO, El Nino and La Nina. But since one of the only things the IPCC admits about solar forcing is how much the sun controls ENSO, when here they say it's sunspots and ENSO controlling rain, it means it's the sun and the sun. Up next, similar vein of solar forcing where the 27-day rotation of our star is gauged in terms of UV variability and recurrent electromagnetic features. They found this rotation period matches up with pressure and temperature patterns down to the troposphere, ground level. And I always wonder how they separate that 27 to 28-day cycles in our atmosphere as being due to solar rotation or lunar cycles. Now, last but not least, I hope you have at least heard about people studying sun cycles and extreme human behavior, from economic decision-making to war. Armed conflicts have long been studied and tied to peaks of solar activity, and this study suggests we're within one year of the major conflict. It also suggests the temperatures are about to start cooling, impacting crops. In general, paper gives a pretty bleak outlook for the coming years here. Many conferences at Observer Ranch slated the next two months. Dr. Dunning slated for early May. More announcements coming soon. Come see us, ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.